videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Heavily controversial internet personalities Andrew and Tristan Tate have spent the past few months in a Romanian jail cell after being booked on suspicion of organized crime and human trafficking. But guess what? A little less than four months later, they'd win an appeal to replace their detention center holdings with the much more comfortable surroundings of being placed under house arrest. Last week, the Bucharest Court of Appeal ruled in favor of the request, which challenged an earlier judge's decision to extend both brothers' arrest by 30 days for a fourth time. Andrew and Tristan were both initially detained in late December in the Romanian capital alongside two women. All four were brought in after Romania's anti-organized crime agency had identified six victims in an alleged human trafficking case who were subjected to acts of physical violence and mental coercion, as well as being sexually exploited by members of the brothers' alleged crime group. The agency would reveal that the women were lured to the Tate compounds with pretenses of entering into romantic relationships, but they were later intimidated, placed under surveillance, and subjected to control tactics while being coerced into creating adult material for Andrew and Tristan's financial gain. In fact, a leak court document seen by the BBC suggests that the victims were forced to earn over 8,000 pounds a month or face the possibility of physical reprisal. Those same documents also describe the women's debts as being used against them in a form of psychological coercion. All that being said, as of this exact moment in time, no charges have officially been brought against the brothers or either one of their Romanian associates. While being held behind bars, Andrew Tate informed his millions of followers through email that he had been left in a cell with only insects to keep him company, writing, thrown inside a cell without light. Cockroaches, lice, and bedbugs are my only friends at night. But following a series of appeals denied because the brothers were believed to pose a flight risk, Andrew and Tristan finally find themselves breathing free air once more after being granted the right to remain under house arrest until at least April 29. Prosecutors will have until the end of June to officially charge the Tate brothers with a crime and send them to trial. As the Tates left the detention facility they had previously been sequestered inside, Tristan told the media that the judges had made the right decision. Then he and Andrew climbed into a car and headed off to the Cobra Tate estate where they will be spending at least the next 30 days. There are plenty of exclusive neighborhoods in Bucharest that are jam-packed with beautiful villas, tennis courts, pool houses, and staff quarters that all cost millions. I'm talking about neighborhoods like Primaveri, Kiselev, or even Dorabach. But the Tate brothers don't live in any of those places. Instead, they live on the outskirts of Bucharest in a town known as Voluntari, inside of a $700,000 warehouse that they purchased in 2017 and then spent what's believed to be a few million repurposing it into a full-time living space. The Tate Brothers fans would tell you that they need to live out here in the boonies to keep a low profile. But when you think about it, that excuse is pretty much the opposite of what the Tate Brothers are all about. Outside of the compound, the gate is suitably masculine as you might expect, heavy and black. Meanwhile, the front door to his place looks very much like it might be bomb proof while also being accented with red neon lights. Inside, the place is less of a glamorous Hollywood hideaway and more like a sparsely decorated factory of sadness. Everywhere you look is fake brick, shadowy corners, and dark windows. The images we've seen from the inside over the years have revealed a very obvious bachelor pad that's been decorated with sleek furniture in contemporary style. For instance, one room access through a fingerprint lock holds a high-tech display of monitors with multiple security video feeds. Alternatively, this space doubles as the brothers' home office or library, a wood-paneled room with leather armchairs where Andrew regularly films a majority of his content. Back out in the main space that includes both a living area and a kitchen, you'll find a series of leather accruements as well as a gigantic widescreen TV and a kitchen table. Rounding the estate off is an area located directly across from the primary bedroom that's been ripped straight out of a James Bond film and contains a glass 
glass wardrobe that shows off an array of firearms that would probably be illegal in many countries around the world. As for the bedroom, well the most eye popping thing about it is the Japanese katana Andrew keeps in a place of honor right beside where he sleeps. What might he need to use that weapon for in the middle of the night? I'm almost afraid to ask because he's really not all that skilled with it even during daylight hours. It might not be everyone's idea of home sweet home come to think of it, it probably wouldn't be many people's idea of the perfect place to live. But for the next few weeks the Tate brothers will find themselves holed up right here waiting to find out what happens next. After being released from prison and returning home, Andrew wasted no time posting a video of himself walking walking around his estate's main living space while smoking a cigar. According to the accompanying tweet that was paired with the video, Andrew was deep in the midst of achieving absolute clarity of mind while also devising plans, ignoring his phone, and conquering Satan. You know, normal everyday things I guess. Shortly after he appeared standing outside his home and recorded a message of thanks to the judges who decided to set him free. While Andrew insisted that there was a zero 0% chance that he would be convicted for something he hadn't done, his brother Tristan took to social media to reflect on the simpler things in life, like say wearing a pair of comfy shoes after being locked up for so long. What's more, Andrew has officially begun corresponding with some of his fans through email and over the weekend he reflected in one of these communications. If you truly believe you are screwed, the system is against you and you'll never get out, a strange sense of calm comes over you. When I accepted I may never get out of prison, I felt better. Isn't that insane? Based upon a few of the other curious morsels he dropped on social media, it appears Andrew is revving himself up for some type of confrontation, including the potential possibility of someone attempting to end his life. I don't know about all of that, but if the Tate brothers were really sequestered under 24 hour lockdown during their stay in prison, like they've suggested is the case, then maybe paranoia has has begun to sink into their day to day lives, especially by the sounds of it with Andrew. How will this story end? Will the Tate brothers be free to leave the confines of their home come the end of this month? Or will they officially be charged by then and be awaiting the beginning of their trial? We don't know the answers to those questions quite yet, but if you stay tuned here and to Famous News, you'll for sure be among the first to find out. For now, that'll bring this latest house tour to a close. Thanks for watching today's special episode, and before you head out, consider that are answering the following question. If you found yourself under house arrest, what's the one routine you'd stick to every day to keep yourself busy? Give Andrew and Tristan Tate some ideas to help pass their days in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss a drop. My name is Kara, and if you enjoyed this look into the estate and house arrest of the Tate brothers, then keep on watching, because coming up, I'm going to take you inside the home of another convicted celebrity felon, Tory Lanez. I'll see you all next time. Bye. I never put my hands on anybody. I never raised my voice too loud. Like this was one of them times where it was like. According to recent reports, Canadian rapper Tory Lanez is going to be spending a lot more time inside over the next few weeks as a judge has ordered him to be placed under house arrest until his trial against Megan Thee Stallion finally begins at the end of November. This developing story has left many of Tory's fans wondering where exactly it is he'll be keeping a low profile over the next month. Will it be in his condo apartment in Florida or how about a formal rental home not far from there that he celebrated his birthday in last year. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. We'll dive more into which of those two properties it might be in a few more minutes, but first, a little background in regards to what's going on with Tori in the first place. At this point, I probably don't really need to go over his feud with Megan Thee Stallion, Tori's one time friend and rumored flame. So here's a little bit of notes on what happened. In the summer of 2020, a violent altercation erupted in the backseat of an SUV between these two, which would end with Megan accusing Tori of having shot her in the feet. They've been waiting on the trial to unfold ever since. 
Unfortunately for Tori, he recently got involved in another alleged incident with yet another celebrity. This time it was August Alsina, and his recent house arrest order stemmed directly from this altercation, in which he was said to have beaten up the R&B singer in Chicago a few weeks ago. Back on September 18th, August Alsina would take to social media to claim he had been assaulted by Tori after crossing paths with the rapper backstage at the concert. The story goes that Tori approached the singer and offered to shake his hand after the two had exchanged some bitter words on Twitter during the weeks before. Rather than take the offered olive branch, August walked away. That's apparently when everything broke loose. Video would later surface of the incident, and while it doesn't show the fight itself, it does reveal Tori walking after August and later reappearing on screen as someone else says, Tori said he just knocked August Alsina right out. One punch crushed him. August would then post images of the aftermath of the fight to Instagram, and it certainly looks like someone did a solid number on him. After the images leaked, Tori would maintain his innocence, claiming he had no idea what August was talking about. No doubt because he was already facing some serious prison time after being charged for assault with a semi-automatic weapon in connection to what went down with Megan. A few months ago in April, Tori was even taken into custody for violating a restraining order was in place to protect Megan from coming into contact with him. Tori wound up having to pay $350,000 in bail and was then released. Now Megan's lawyers are arguing that Tori deserves to be remanded into custody after being involved in another violent incident with Alcina. As far as his prosecutors are concerned, Tori's attack on Alcina violated the conditions of his bail in Megan's case, and they've accused the rapper of posing a threat to public safety. Tory's attorney has, of course, pushed back against these demands, noting that no charges have been filed by Alcina against Tory, and that as far as anyone knows, the singer's claims are only allegations. So what wound up happening? Well, the judge split the difference. Rather than lock Tory up in a prison cell, the decision was made to confine the rapper to his home with a GPS monitor attached to his ankle beginning on Friday, October 28th. Tori must remain under house arrest until November 28th, the start date of his trial against Megan the Stallion. If he winds up being convicted as charged, Tori could face a possible max sentence of 22 years and eight months in state prison, something that Megan would be perfectly happy with. She told Rolling Stone earlier this year, I want him to go to jail. Well, where is it exactly that Tori might be spending the next four weeks? Let's check out a couple of his options. The most likely suspect when it comes to where Tori will be crashing for the next month or so is a corner penthouse condo on the 49th floor of Brickell Heights East in Miami, Florida. Tori purchased this three bedroom and three bath unit in late 2018 for a reported $1.8 million. The apartment boasts 2,182 square feet of space and features what's said to be some breathtaking views of the nearby Biscayne Bay, not to mention some amazing skyline vistas. When this unit was originally up for sale a few years ago, it was marketed as the absolute best according to the listing information. It's said to include details like contemporary Italian cabinets, imported stone countertops, and floor-to-ceiling tinted glass walls that surround the dramatic, open concept living space consisting of the living room and kitchen. Better yet, the building itself comes with its own rooftop pool, spa, a fully loaded gym, and plenty of gathering spaces for throwing a celebration or two. Something that Tori no doubt took advantage of while living here. But here's the thing, Tori's ownership of this condo has actually fallen into question over the past few months, and paperwork filed in Miami-Dade County would suggest that Tori is facing foreclosure on his home. The rapper, whose real name is Daystar Peterson, is mentioned in a notice of foreclosure that was filed with the clerk of courts on February 4th, 2022, as well as a separate lawsuit that was filed one month later in March. The notice and lawsuit were both both filed by BH4908, which is a limited liability company registered in Florida, owned by the people who sold the condo to Tory. Legal documents show that Tory took out a promissory note with the LLC for $1.26 million in 2018. This was said to include interest only payments in the monthly amount of around 11K, as well as a balloon payment of $1.237 million that was to be due on December 1st, 2021. Well, unfortunately for Tori, with everything that's been going on in his life since summer 2020,
money, making that balloon payment seem to have slipped his mind. According to the complaint filed by the LLC, Tori made only the monthly payments but failed to pony up when it came to that million dollar payout. As a result, the complaint filed with the court includes two counts, mortgage foreclosure and the breach of this promissory note. The LLC has asked the court to be allowed to sell Tori's property and pay off the loan. If this were to happen, Tori would be left without a residence in Miami. In fact, he might be left without a permanent residence anywhere in the United States as this is the only home he has a paper trail connecting him to. In late March 2022, Tori's roommate in Florida, Sebastian Rompotis, a songwriter that Tori's worked with many times, was the only one in the condo, so he wound up being served with this $1.2 million lawsuit. As a result, the lawsuit can now move forward, but Lanes has yet to respond to the case. His apartment also hasn't popped up on any listings as I can tell, which should mean that he could probably still own it and spend the next month or so waiting out his house arrest as his trial against Megan gets ready to proceed. But even if Tory ends up winning that case, he still got this lawsuit against the former owners of his condo to deal with. In other words, it doesn't seem like Tory Lanes can catch a break. If Tory does wind up getting kicked out of his Florida condo before the end of November, another place he might be able to head is a Florida home he rented only a few months ago. When Tory was looking to celebrate his 29th birthday in the summer of 2021, he spared no expense securing himself this stunning looking rental estate, which he advertised across social media as a celebration in which only women could RSVP. While I'm sure all those women enjoyed celebrating his big day with some loud music and front of this gorgeous grand entrance of that home with its towering palm trees, stunning lawn, and that monster sized pool out back, there's almost no chance that Tory Lanes will be laying low at this property since it's not actually his to begin with. All right, everyone, that is gonna bring this house tour to a close. Before we head out though, do me one favor and ask yourselves, this question. If you had a potential 22 year charge hanging over your head, would you be laying as low as possible or out there living your best life just in case you don't get a second chance to do so? Let me know what you would do in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat further, and I'll see you all in another one. Bye.